Hello students. Today we will be studying a poem from the Hornbill which is the textbook in English for class 11. The name of the poem is A Photograph and its poet is Shirley Towson. Shirley Towson was born on the 20th of May 1924 in England. She had a huge passion for writing and was greatly influenced by her father who was a writer too. She took up writing as a career but also served as the editor for many magazines. Among her notable writings are The Drawers, The Celtic Alternative, Walking Around Wales, etc. Let's understand the significance of the title, A Photograph. A photograph is actually a memory which takes you back in time. It also captures the emotions felt at the time when the photograph was taken. The poet wrote this poem in memory of her mother. It highlights the memories associated with a photograph of a mother so we can see that it is a tribute to her mother. Theme of the poem in this poem, the poet contrasts the eternal state of nature with the transient or the ever-changing state of human being. The central idea of the poem is that man is mortal while nature is eternal. Death and decay is an integral part of life while nature remains unchanged. Now, let us read the first stanza of the poem. The cardboard shows me how it was when the two girls, cousins, went padding, each one holding one of my mother's hands. And she, the big girl, some twelve years or so, all three stood still to smile through their hair at the uncle with the camera. A sweet face, my mother's, that was before I was born, and the sea, which appears to have changed less, washed their terribly transient feet. Let's understand some difficult words of this stanza. Padding means walking with bare feet in shallow water. And transient means lasting only for a short period of time. The poem starts with how an old photograph pasted on a cardboard makes the poet recall the memories of a mother. The photograph was of a mother when she had gone on a sea beach holiday with her two cousins. The photograph is a depiction of a mother's enjoyable moment at a sea beach holiday with her two cousins who were younger to her. They went padding in the sea, holding the poet's mother's hand, who was about 12 years old then. All the three girls were smiling in the photograph. As it was windy at that time, their hair were flying over their smiling faces. The photograph had been clicked by her uncle's camera. Her mother's face in the photograph was very sweet and charming. The photograph was taken before the poet was born. The poet further says that the sea, whose waters had washed their feet in the photograph, did not seem to have changed much with the passage of time. Let us now read the last two lines of the stanza. And the sea, which appears to have changed less, washed their terrible transient feet. In these lines, the poet draws a contrast between the transient nature of humans and the eternal nature. Children, transient as explained earlier means lasting only for a short time. And here feet suggests human life which is transient 
or shortened. The poet says that the girls have drastically changed over the years, but the sea remains unchanged despite the passage of time. We can also say that the only thing that had remained unchanged in the photograph was the sea which was washing the feet of the three girls. So, in this stanza, the poet very beautifully explains the transient or ever-changing nature of human beings. Now, let us read the second stanza of the poem. Some 20-30 years later, she'd laugh at the snapshot. See Betty and Dolly, she'd sing. And look how they dressed us for the beach. The sea holiday was a past. Mine is a laughter. Both vary with the laboured ease of loss. Let's have a look at some difficult words in the stanza. Labored is a task done with great effort. And ease means comfort. In this stanza, the poet recollects how even after 20-30 years, her mother's laughter, her mother laughed seeing this photograph. She nostalgically remembered the happy memories of her childhood. Looking at the photograph and laughing, she would comment on the dresses worn by her cousins, Betty and Dolly and herself, for the beach holiday. The beach holiday was her mother's past, while her mother's laughter is now the poet's past, as the poet's mother was dead. The poet remembers how her mother would laugh seeing the photograph with a fondness as well as a sense of loss. She would feel sad at the loss of her childhood joy. In the same way too, the poet feels nostalgic remembering her mother's laughter which has now become a thing of the past. The poet says that with great difficulty both reconciled with their respective losses. Both vary with the laboured ease of loss. Vary means disappointed. Both of them were disappointed and dejected over their loss. In the phrase, laboured ease of loss, the word laboured conveys that both the poet and her mother were struggling to cope with their loss. Yet both realised that the loss was final and they had to accept it. Therefore, the word ease is used. Therefore, it can be explained that the memories of both were painful though beautiful. Here, the poet is talking about her mother's memory of the beach holiday and the poet's memory of her mother's laughter. Now let us read the third stanza. Now she's been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived. And of this circumstance, there is nothing to say at all. It's silence, silences. In this last stanza, the poet recalls that it is nearly 12 years since her mother had died. For the poet, this circumstance or situation of the death of a mother 
arouses great sadness and she feels an acute sense of loss. She is now left with no words to express her grief and loss. She is totally consumed in grief. She can feel the acute pain of the loss of her mother but is unable to express it in words. This painful silence caused by the death of her mother leaves her with no words to express it. The pain of separation and silence has surrounded her. Thus, in the last line, its silence silences. The poet expresses that this painful silence seems to have silenced all her thoughts. So children, through this meaningful poem, a strong message is conveyed that nature is eternal. It remains constant while human life is transient, that is, it is temporary, forever changing. We can conclude by saying that the poem deals with the theme of impermanence of life. Human life is short-lived. Death is an integral part. What is left behind are just memories which are evoked by photographs. Let's now have a look at the various poetic devices used in this poem. Alliteration has been used in this poem. Alliteration is a figure of speech in which the same sound is repeated. It is actually a repetition of sound. Examples of alliteration in the poem are Stood still to smile Here the S sound is repeated Terribly transient The T sound is repeated Silence silences The S sound is repeated The next poetic device is transferred epithet. This is a figure of speech in which an ad adjective is transferred from one noun to another noun. Example of transferred epithet can be seen in the phrase transient feet. Here, transient is an adjective for life, but it has been transferred to the noun feet. Oxymoron is another poetic device used in this poem. Oxymoron is the coming together of two opposite ideas to describe the same entity. Have a look at the last line of stanza 2 where the poet says labored ease of loss. Here labored and ease are two opposite words describing the same entity loss. Personification is yet another poetic device used by the poet in this poem. Personification is a figure of speech when human characteristics are attributed to non-living things. Example of personification can be seen in the last line of the poem. Silence, silences. 
Here, silence is a circumstance or a situation which is expressing a human trait of staying silent. So children, with this, we come to the end of the explanation and the poetic devices of this poem. Hope you all have understood it. Thank you.